All right, guys, so I get this question a lot. And I, even though I made a similar video about a couple of months ago, I want to remake it so that eventually I can help a lot of you. And the video is uh, all about how you can farm the crypto in a week account. First thing first, I want to showcase my account. I know to some of you it's not a beginner account, it is not a weak account. Uh, for those of you who think that this is the case, I'm going to link my video which I did on an account that was around three weeks old. So that's under a month, free to play account starting from scratch, so that you can see how I was farming the crypt back then. Because if you start the, the game yesterday and you're free to play, you cannot farm the crypt. If you started the game five days ago and you're free to play, you cannot farm the crypt. So you need to have certain characters in order to start farming the crypt, even on the easiest uh, difficulty possible. With that said, this is my uh, this is my character list. This is my roster. So what my general strategy is in the crypt? I use always MK Classic Scorpion because Classic Scorpion is the guy who can carry me, and I also use two characters that give bonuses. And the wider the range of characters is, the better because what you are doing is you're using uh, Scorpion with two weak guys that are there just for the bonuses. Then you are using Invigorating Stone to refresh Scorpion, and then use other two guys that are giving bonuses. In my particular case, in the crypt, as you can see. I already farmed 2,300 hearts, I started today, uh, and because I didn't have opportunity to play. My team is uh, MK Level Lucane, Sonia, uh, and Lucane. MK Level Lucane and Sonia are the team just for the bonuses. They are not there for anything else. But remember, the best way to farm the crypt in the beginning is this particular way. You have one main fighter that you master and you know to play good with, and two guys that are there just for bonuses. You're going to say what's going to happen if you're facing aftershock tremor. It is an unfortunate situation. In my particular case, the best way that I can, let's say, take advantage, not take advantage, but um, to take care of aftershock tremor is to have uh, this particular item, uh, which is, uh, you know what, I'm going to also include something else. Why I'm doing that? Because by doing this, I will have 100% resistance to stun. So my MK11 looking is kind of safe. And this is the equipment I gave to Classic Scorpion. Currently farming the crypt is extremely easy due to the fact that you have permanent enrage. So I have um, the Rat Hammer, the Champion's Leather Braces, and the Misfortune Teller. The Misfortune Teller is giving me a critical hit chance. My enemy is affected by curse, and my special one more or less almost guarantees that I'm going to apply curse to the entire enemy team, which is super, super useful. Uh, now, with this particular team, my strategy is I beat hard mode, then I refresh Scorpion. If I have to pay 60 souls, I do pay. That's fine. Even if you, at the end of the day, after the end of the season, you spend 500 souls just to refresh Scorpion, or let's say your, your strongest diamond or the strongest go that can carry, for instance, let's say that your strongest card is Classic Sonia. So you spend the souls to refresh Classic Sonia, and at the end of the day, you spend 500 souls just for refreshing Sonia and keep beating hard difficulty of the crypt. Uh, you have to ask yourself the question is it worth to spend 500 souls and get? guaranteed copy of Ravenous Melina. To me, the answer is absolutely. Ravenous Melina is a perfect character, and in this particular case, I don't have her. So I definitely need Ravenous Melina, and I definitely need a copy of Ceremonial Pipes. So my goal is 1600 hearts. Uh, so this is how I'm going to beat it. I beat Heart Mode, then I refresh Scorpion, then I change the supporting guys that give bonuses, beat Heart Mode again, until I am out of characters that give 1.5 bonus. So, more or less, uh, of course, in order to do that multiple times, you also require to have some keys. And that's my next point. You shouldn't really spend your keys lightly. You can get keys from the combat pack for free. You can get keys by doing the regular um, daily ads, just watching ads and you can get some keys. And there are some other ways which I forgot, but you are getting keys here and there. Uh, the general case is, uh, the moment you get the key, you shouldn't really spend it lightly. You know in the crypt there are certain seasons that you just have to get one item. Or there are certain seasons that are so good that you need to you need to really farm the crypt a lot. And for such seasons, you require to have keys. So make sure that you have them stacked. Make sure that you have at least, let's say, always 10 keys or something. Because if you're in a situation when uh, you need to play the game so that you can get specific gears or specific characters, and whatever you do, you simply don't have the keys. You have the time, you have the desire to farm, but you don't have the keys. That's a problem because... If you ever get into such spot, this means you have to spend money to get the keys, which is never a good idea. So definitely make sure that you collect the keys and don't spend them lightly. Apart from that, this is a strategy. Make sure you tag with Classic Scorpion. I have uh, the Varmint's Lucky Hat on Lucane, so the moment Classic Scorpion tags, he's going to gain shield. 
and thanks to, thanks to the Lucane armor, he also starts regenerating. So generally speaking, uh, it is a super, super good strategy for the creep. You more or less can never die. Uh, the, your only problem, your only problem here is aftershock tremor, or if you are fighting enemies with a modifier off balance. That's really, really unfortunate. If you are fighting off balance modifier, you have two options. Option number one: just keep the fight, go around the fight, or yeah, whatever you, you name it. Option number two. Uh, make sure to kill him super fast with Classic Scorpion, which basically means that Classic Scorpion shouldn't be your second, he has to be your starter, uh, so that you can kill the entire enemy team as fast as possible. And this is perfectly achievable in hard difficulty, it's not really always achievable in elder difficulty. And this leads me to the third tip. The third tip, guys, is focus on the stage, on the difficulty that you can actually farm. And it's not super difficult to you to beat. For instance, in my particular case, this is hard. I can beat Elder. I already beat Elder on my beginner account. But I know that it's not going to be that easy to beat. And I have to spend a lot of consumables. And I can die in the process. So I prefer to farm a difficulty that's easier, faster, and safer. Because I can actually farm. As you can see, when it comes to the Elder difficulty, I can beat it, but I cannot farm it that easy. I'm going to lose time in the process, I'm going to use a lot of consumables, and if I die a lot, this means I'm going to spend a lot of souls too. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Uh, so unfortunate. So, I don't know. You know what, I'm going to, for this, for this particular fight, I will play safe and I'm going to use the Living Dead. Um, yeah, definitely I'm going to play safe here. Uh, yeah, so I was saying, if you die a lot, you have to spend a lot of souls if you don't have the revival. Uh, you know, consumables, which currently on my beginner account I don't, since, like, I die sometimes, so I have to use it. And the general case is, it's not Scorpion the guy who dies, uh, it is the supports, because they're usually super weak and die to tremor, stuff like this. Okay. Uh, so Kabao is going to die, and then Shantou is going to die, I'm going to do the, do the fight, I'm going to clear the stage, and I hope then we can call it a day after this fight, it wasn't really difficult at all. It was a boss fight, but it was super, super easy. Alright guys, let's see what I'm going to get. And this is going to be all for you today. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Nothing special. Nothing special. And by the way, uh, tip number four. If you have a lot of consumables like this. For instance, you have I have like 41 small 4 stone. You can give 10 to Scorpion or let's say 5 to Scorpion. To boost his damage 50% so that you can do the stages even easier. I mean, it's always a good idea. I'm not using them for some reason. I don't know why. In my opinion, it's going to be a uh, good idea to use at least a couple of them to Scorpion, let's say. Ooh, that's too much. Let's say 70% 70. 70 damage boost is crazy. So, the next fight is going to be... Let's see. Okay, let's see how fast they're going to die. I bet this is going to be very easy. One for all. Alright, one for all is another unfortunate modifier. Uh, but uh, since I already have 70% boost, I doubt this is going to be difficult to beat. Let's see. Alright. Blue Kane has the power generation, that's that's unfortunate. Okay, she's dead. I have the living dead, totally forgot. I have to bring back the, the Blue Kane armor so I can regenerate and be always at full health HP. The living dead is good only in cases when there is some kind of a threat uh, to my existence. Some, knowing that I'm going to die, there is a, a character that can tag in and demolish me, such as for instance Classic Raiden. So if you're not careful, you can die. But generally speaking, uh, go for the more versatile option, which is not the Living Dead, but in my opinion, it is the Wookiee Armor. Because you have Shield, thanks to the Varmint Sluggy Hat, and then you're regenerating on attack, which basically means that you more or less finish every single fight at 100% health. I hope you found this video useful, guys. See you next time, and have an amazing rest of your day. Take care.